for the Oregon Ducks, a chance for them to start 5-0. They've got wins over Jackson State, Baylor, Savannah State, and Valpo. Now the Red Wolves of Arkansas State. A quick trigger off the opening tip. A rebound pulled down by Tyler Dorsey, the freshman. Well, Dorsey putting up big numbers here early in his freshman year. Six foot four, can see over the top, a playmaker and shot maker. Well, Brooks trying to pick up right where he left off. Loose ball rebound, Anthony Livingston, a junior from D.C. Quick post feed, that's Sean Gardner. Leaves it inside for Christian Davis, and the Red Wolves get the first buckets. Well, Arkansas State getting down the floor and organized in their early offense. Benson runs the one for Oregon. Ten assists, just one turnover for the point guard for the Ducks. Brooks just off the line. He starts 0 of 2 and another board for Livingston. Both these teams want to push the tempo. We'll look for early opportunities in transition. Here's Gardner to the top, puts it down with the left. Dorsey collects for Oregon and will push. Tyler Dorsey, the freshman, slashing to the free throw line next. Let's take a look at your Lexus keys to the game, Lav. Well, for Arkansas State, State, it's about taking care of the basketball in a tough environment on the road, and then defensive rebounding, which creates their offense. Oregon defending the three-point line, using that speed and quickness to dictate a fast up-tempo. Dorsey very efficient the other night as he misses the first in support of Dylan Brooks. 21 points on seven of nine shooting, hit three threes, and so already two 20-plus point efforts in his debut season. A rough start from the floor and at the line for the Oregon Ducks. See if Arkansas State goes through Anthony Livingston. He's the double-double waiting to happen. He's at the near side block, guarded by Boucher. Dante Thomas crosses over, gets baseline on Benson, and there is Boucher to meet him at the rim. Great help side defense by Boucher. Elgin Cook pulls up. A cold shooting start for the Ducks. Frigid temperatures. De Devin Carter pulls and pushes. He is one of five lefties on the Arkansas State roster. Based on a survey sent to sports info directors, that's tied for the most in college basketball. Well, Carter, six foot five, also able to see over the top. Looking for the whistle there in transition. The hit ahead, Elgin Cook. Boucher trailing the play. Well, there's the track meet speed. Ducks like to get out and run. Good finish by the big fella. After starting 0 of 4, that's their first hoop. Three-quarter court pressure here. Red Wolves able to get through it. And Devin Carter again at six foot five, 200 pounds from Champaign, Illinois, comes out to Tyler Dorsey. Takes a couple of on-ball screens. Boucher can shoot it from three. Hits back iron here, pulled by Dante Thomas. So much for shot selection. Dana Altman giving his Ducks the green light, the Emerald City green light. They want some aggressive on all catches. Uh, Livingston back to the perimeter. I, you're right. I don't think the Ducks have noticed the uh, five seconds that have been shaved off the shot clock year to year, at least to this point in the season. It has not been a factor for them. A lefty jumper on the way. Missed. Elgin Cook brings it up the floor for the Ducks. Dorsey using the up fake to get to the elbow, and he's fouled. Christian Davis, the freshman from Dallas, caught him. Boucher, the ability to run the floor like a deer and then stretch out using that length for the flush. Boucher hit the first road bump in his Oregon career on Sunday. 0 of 5 from the floor, but he impacted the game in other ways. Nine rebounds, three blocks, a couple of steals. 0 of 3 start for Tyler Dorsey at the free throw line. He's at 75% for the young season. In comes Dwayne Benjamin as the first Oregon sub. Oregon, as you know, JB, shorthanded. When they get Ennis and Bell back in the mix, uh, that builds the depth and the ability of Dana Altman to wear teams down with his personnel and the pressure. Uh, Dorsey came up a bit hobbled there. He's at the near side wing, and you can see he's trailing Devin Carter. See if he can defend on ball here. Limping noticeably. They run him off a screen. Livingston over Benjamin. 
Good board by Cook. Everyone on the Ducks roster, it seems, can rebound and push. They don't need to hit the outlet. That's a good point. The versatility, the interchangeable parts. It took a while, but Oregon's back to level. Four apiece, nearly four minutes in. Dante Thomas gets to the line. Nice lead for Charles Waters, a senior from Memphis, but he shuffled the feet. A first turnover of the game for either team. Now Kendall Small steps in for Oregon. So it's Benjamin Benson, Small, Cooks, and Brooks for the Oregon Ducks. Elgin Cook with it here. There's Brooks. He's missed his first couple. Gets to the lane. Dylan Brooks starts 0 of 4. Livingston, the catch in transition, softly with the left. Boy, it made it look so easy. Good look in transition, early post up by Livingston. Brooks continues to fire, still can't crack the seal. 0 of 5 now for Brooks coming off a career high performance in scoring. Let's see if they go back to Livingston. Nope. Instead, missing on the drive, Sean Gardner. Kendall Small on the move, hangs and hits in transition. Kendall Small. This is a breakneck pace. You talk about frenetic basketball. Both teams want to get up and down the floor. How about 22 shots combined? We haven't hit our first media stoppage. It's the old Loyola Marymount with Paul Westhead or Troy State back in the day. Gardner passes on the three to hit Livingston, short corner. Spins out to Benjamin. Small stops at the top of the circle. Dwayne Benjamin, bang. Good trail by Benjamin there. The recognition to hit the open man. It's important for the Ducks to establish another three-point threat. Outside of Tyler Dorsey, who's shooting at better than a 50% clip from three, the rest of the Ducks at 23% from distance. Benson with numbers. The law, Brooks, tips it out to Small. Benjamin this time using the up fake. Hits Elgin Cook. All alone for three, but misses. A good possession there by the Ducks, though. The extra pass was evident, looking for the open man. Six minutes of uninterrupted basketball to start this contest. A long rebound out to Gardner. Who wouldn't want to play for one of these two teams? <laughs> You're offensive-minded. Forget defense. Let's put up the rock. John Brady and Dana Altman, the coaches tonight for Arkansas State and the Oregon Ducks. Small's in the passing lane. Benson picks it up. Running with Elgin Cook. He takes it himself. Benjamin trailing the play. Where's the defenders? Arkansas State with the timeout. It's going to force John Brady to take the first timeout. An ice-cold shooting start for the Oregon Ducks, but they've rallied for a five-point lead. In the cold there as we see him blow his nose on the night before Thanksgiving. <laughs> Those are some cold hard facts for you. I was there on Sunday. It is cold in Eugene. Vitamin in C, chicken soup, matzo ball soup, critical at this time of the year. Get that rest. A lot of fluids as well for Dana and the Ducks. Out of Jonesboro, Arkansas, the Red Wolves are in town. Their next stop is at Baylor and then at Missouri. So how about that Power 5 three-game road swing? Well, challenging themselves early, trying to get some report cards, find out about themselves before they get into league play in the Sun Belt. Now Christian Davis didn't see the timer. 30 seconds of good D from the Oregon Ducks. Well, it's unfortunate, too, because Coach Brady was clearly coming out of that timeout, instructing his team to be patient, uh, to probe, to look for a good shot. There's a balance. You want to push in transition, but also play with purpose in terms of getting good looks at the basket. Benjamin has been a great spark off the Oregon bench. Well, put it on the floor, take it to the hole, attack the cup. Uh, Ducks have ripped off nine unanswered to take this 13-6 lead. Already below 20 seconds as Arkansas State gets into the half court. Let's see who the arrow favors. It's going over to Oregon. Got to pay that shot off at point-blank range. Tough to wedge the ball between the rim and the glass. Don't see that very often. 
as Kelvin Downs, a senior from Arlington, Texas. Benson working with Trevor Manuel, a freshman into the contest for the first time tonight. A lot of combinations here as Dana Altman rotates his personnel very liberally. Boucher has time to line up the triple. Rebound to P.J. Hardwick, 5'10 redshirt junior. Uh, Jure curling off the screen and lost it. Numbers for the Ducks. Boucher mm. tried to force it to Benson. That's the first Oregon turnover. They're on a 9-0 run to grab this 13-6 lead over the Red Wolves. Opponents because he's skilled enough to beat bigger, slower, lumbering opponents off the bounce, but can also slide inside, do some damage against smaller defenders on the boards and as well as scoring over them. Get a sense of the depth, too, for this Oregon team. He had an off night against Valpo, responds in great fashion here. Dylan Brooks, a slow start, but of course he was the career high scorer on Sunday against the Crusaders. Well, Cook and Brooks, uh, Benjamin, you know, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, skilled athletes. Uh, that's what Coach Altman looks for in recruiting, and that's personnel that fits his system. Manuel's another one. He got that block. Duck still fighting for possession of the rebound, and Small was shoved down by P.J. Hardwick. He picks up the foul. That'll be the third on the Red Wolves. Look at Darren White, part of our officiating crew there. Tommy Nunez, Daryl Galinas with him. There was some concern that we would be able to tip this game on time because, unfortunately, our uh, officiating crew was in a car accident. Minor, thankfully, on their way to the arena. Fortunate to be starting on time, but mostly just to have them healthy and fit for this game. Hopefully a seamless trip home so they can get some turkey and mashed potatoes and be with their loved ones tomorrow. Here's to that. Benjamin on rotation to Benson. Ten to shoot for the Ducks. Manuel sets the on-ball screen. Gets it back right wing. Mm, whistled one over the rim. A one of seven start from distance for the Oregon Ducks. Dante Thomas holding over his head. A whistle away from the basketball as Kelvin Downs went spilling. Look at Manuel and Benjamin. Manuel's from Lansing, Michigan, a four-star recruit. The number three player out of Michigan, according to ESPN.com. He'll come off along with Benson as Dylan Brooks returns. Tyler Dorsey as well. It's like musical chairs with the Ducks, and you have to be alert defensively with all these substitutions in terms of your assignments on the defensive side of the ball. Looks like they'll zone it and now match up. Coming out of that baseline under, there's a new shot clock for the Red Wolves. Good communication here by the Ducks defensively. You see the vision, a lot of pointing. Livingston too strong. Dylan Brooks boards and pushes. Elgin Cook, a hard baseline drive. Gathers, goes up and scores. Elgin Cook. Yeah, the Ducks present a number of matchup problems when you have the versatility and skill, the interchangeable parts in terms of the personnel they put on the floor. A whistle on the second chance opportunity. Kelvin Downs had hands on it. Benjamin's going to get the foul. That'll be the second team foul on the Oregon Ducks. You know, in many respects, the Ducks play a similar brand of basketball as the Golden State Warriors. Still undefeated in the NBA. The small ball, bigs that can step away and face the bucket. Guards that can post up. Puts a lot of pressure on defenses when you have five players that can put it on the floor, can shoot it and pass it. Even more depth coming when Bell and Ennis get healthy. Do you think they'll be able to integrate seamlessly when they do come back in December? I, I believe so, and, and their system or style lends itself. Again, a marriage of personnel and style of play here at Oregon. And so there's a comfort level as teams and personnel get familiar. A small reaching in there. A-State shooting just 16% from the floor. They're stuck on six points, and that has bought Oregon some time to warm up their jumpers. 
From Arkansas State, if you're John Brady, the big three, Livingston, Thomas, and Carter, they have to get involved here offensively in terms of getting good looks at the basket. So you run your sets, whether it's zone or man-to-man attack, those three, uh, Livingston in particular, has to get touches, but Thomas and Carter as well need to be involved. Roman Sorkin answers for the Oregon Ducks. Arkansas State has gone 0 for their last nine from the floor as Sean Gardner pulls. And it's an 0 for 10 drought now for the visitors. Brooks challenged to shoot from three again. Still can't connect. One of nine from deep for Oregon. They continue to lock and load, though. They like to launch the rockets from distance, JB. Livingston with a nice look. Nahum Bakum couldn't pay it off, but the Red Wolves do get the buckets. Nahum Bakum, a senior from Harlem, playing about nine minutes per game. Big old wide body down low. There's Sorkin. A good catch from Brooks. Fouled on the way up. So inside a nine to go opening half, and the Ducks will have a chance to extend their 15 to 8 lead. You see the story of the game so far. Dwayne Benjamin, he's outscoring the Red Wolves himself, isn't he, Laff? Opportunistic player, JB. Uh, could put it on the floor. Excellent in transition in terms of finishing in the open court. Uh, a creator, a facilitator. Uh, like so many of these Ducks. And I can't emphasize enough the importance of the assistant coaches understanding what Dana Altman wants and what he needs for his system of play. And that's what recruiting's about, that marriage of personnel and system. Tony Stubblefield, Kevin McKenna, Mike Manega. The assistants for Altman, a one out of two from Sorkin, his first free throws of the year. Devin Carter on the move, trying to get the post feed. Elgin Cook stole it, but stepped on the end line. Well, there's an example of that foot speed. And as we see Cook fight around in the post, get into that passing lane, and nearly picked it off. Again, the foot speed, the quickness, the length. Just couldn't get his balance before stepping out of bounds. Cook making his 41st consecutive start tonight, most among the Ducks, and he's also the or only Oregon player to reach double figures in each night of the season. Uh, Brooks got a steal, but also a turnover. A quick pull on the move. The Red Wolves connects, and they hit double figures. They're within five. Well, hanging around this team, some veterans, a lot of upperclassmen. Some junior college transfers from San Jacinto in Texas. They recruit all over the country. Uh, D.C., Arizona. So what do you tell Dylan Brooks when he's struggling mightily 0 of 7 from the floor coming off a career-high scoring performance? Well, Offensive you know, foul there. Be aggressive, uh, but don't force. And there's opportunities to score in other ways besides a three ball. Well, Dwayne Benjamin's already at his number with nine points. Well, the variety pack here along the baseline, the nice lift gets the bounce, the shooter's touch, and stepping away from distance, torching the nets, and then the flush -a -roo, and again, gathering good balance, gets the feet organized to lift the ball over defenders. So an impressive performance here in the first half. Clearly, Dwayne Benjamin earning that student-athlete scholarship, earning the Benjis or the Benjamins. Well played, Lav, a former four-star recruit. He was all state in track and football as a prep. Had numerous scholarship offers at wide receiver. You can kind of see that reflected in his basketball game. Someone that Verdon Adams probably wouldn't mind throwing a touchdown toss to every now and again, although he's got plenty of weapons in his arsenal as well. Perfect, ha Cook travels. Perfect hairstyle also for the Northwest and for Eugene. You know, a little bit of the creative, the artistic yes. look that he's got going or style. Bohemian, I love it. Bill Walton has his stamp of approval for the Snoop nickname. <laughs> Seven and a half to go. Walton's been on a roll. You talk about a riff king, right? <laughs> Tuning into him from the islands has been very entertaining the last couple days. Straight from Shanghai to the islands, Bill Walton, as only he can. A world traveler, a renaissance man, Eight grateful dead fans. for Arkansas States. Well, the empty possessions will kill you on the road in college basketball if you're John Brady. Get a shot on the rim. Here is Benjamin, feeling it. Put together a good first half. That rattles out on him. See if the Red Wolves can get something going here offensively. 
Dante Thomas feeds the perimeter, and they've hit back-to-back -back threes to get within a possession. Well, again, it's a veteran group. Look how quickly Benjamin breaks loose at the other end of the floor. Poor transition defense, the home run trot or short leg, and by Arkansas State, cost them defensively. Devin Carter has hit those threes. This time he feeds Livingston. Dorsey breaking out, had it poked away, but collects. There's Benson waiting under the rim. Great presence of mind by Dorsey, able to regather the loose ball and deliver the dime. Well, how about Dorsey? This is what I like about his game early. As a freshman, has yet to take a shot in a free-flowing game, but he's got four boards and an assist, and that's a technical on John Brady. Well, Coach Brady frustrated. Felt that the official missed a call. He's a veteran grizzled coach, John Brady. At every level, he's been a championship coach. As we see him get animated here. Yeah, giving it to Tommy Nunez, and I think it was about the preceding play more than the poke away on... He's, he's going to get run here if he's not careful. He's already been warned to get back to the bench. I think he wants to talk specifically to Darren White because that's who he feel felt missed the call that he was asking for. Fighting for his team. Have to respect that. A longtime coach in the South, as I was saying earlier, JB. High school coach, an assistant at Mississippi State. Two tours of duty at Mississippi State. His mentor, Bob Boyd, Richard Williams as well. And this may be the call that he was upset at. I just think he missed it. Went in off balance, had the ball stripped. But again, Coach Brady was blocked from the angle that he has on the sideline. Officials had a better look on it. I don't want to put words in your mouth here, Lab, but sometimes coaches look at the box score and they're just concerned about the overall discrepancy in fouls. And right now, a state has been whistled for twice as many as Oregon. So that may be part of his frustration. Absolutely. A little frustrated. They haven't found their offensive rhythm or flow. Devin Carter, he is heating up. Three threes, all of the makes from distance for A-States. Dorsey, that's his first shot of the night. Well, there's a poise and a calmness about Dorsey, as you were mentioning. He doesn't force, lets the game come to him, yet seizes the opportunities with purpose when there's daylight. Like his size, his demeanor, his bearing on the floor, very mature for a freshman. Well, now getting the hard closeouts, Devin Carter puts it on the deck and drives. It's be a foul on the Oregon Ducks, their fourth of the half. Benson picks up his first personal. First year on the floor for Devin Carter after transferring from Kent State. Chris Boucher returns. Leading the Ducks in rebounding, still getting three blocks per game through four contests. Roman Sorkin will sit. Comes in from Dante Thomas to Kelvin Downs. Good hands on the interior, Elgin Cook. And Benson tied up. This time the arrow. Nope, before they go to the arrow, timeouts. And remember, players during live action are the only ones who can call timeouts starting this year. That did not come from Altman. It came from Benson. A 5.43 away from a State Farm halftime report. Kate Scott is standing by in our San Francisco studios today. Washington had an early morning in the Bahamas against a top 10 Zags group. It did not go in their favor, but they sure battled. Sun Devils OT last night against Marquette. And in women's hoops, the Ducks have started the season just like the men have, 4-0. So we'll check in with Kate Scott in our State Farm halftime reports coming up. A look at the Red Wolves, who have missed their previous 11 shots. Then they rattled off a string of four in a row, including three straight Devin Carter triples. Well, we mentioned earlier, John Brady, a championship-level coach, two championships in the Sun Belt, had two regular season championships with LSU, and, of course, in 06, that final four run with Glenn Big Baby Davis. He's going to retire at the end of this year, I'm assuming, maybe steps into broadcasting or a lot of golf potentially as well. No whistle there on the cook, cook drive. He gets it back, 10 to shoots. 
Drives the lane, Elgin Cook off two feet. Boucher tried to hammer it home and he was fouled. One more thought on John Brady. He's also seven wins shy of 400. So it's a nice little milestone round number for him to finish his career on. Watch the rebounding position by Boucher. Pulls down on the rim. I think he would have been better served just to gather, secure the ball with two hands, and control tip the ball back in the rim. Lab, check out this 6'10", 190-pound frame at the free throw line. Well, we've mentioned before the willow weeds or the bamboo, uh, the string beans, once they get three square meals and the weight room, the strength and conditioning programs at this level are top shelf. And so you'll see his body begin to morph or change as he goes throughout his career. But you start with that length. You can't teach that size. One of the best training tables in all of college athletics in Eugene. Not that they ever let me partake, but I often peer through the glass and see what they're feasting the on. The desserts, I've seen you eye the brownies, the chocolate chip cookies, the snickerdoodles, it, particularly this time of the year, the frosted uh, Christmas cookies as well. I'm fasting, waiting for tomorrow, Lav, and you're just, you're just tantalizing. Heavy on the gravy, JB. Short shot clock and another turnover for the Red Wolves. They're in double digits in this opening half. Well, again, empty possessions. And what we mean by that is get a shot on the rim. Have a chance to make a bucket, get fouled, or get a second shot. But at least put it up on the rim. Dorsey and Benson playing side by side in the Oregon backcourt. Benjamin has been the story of the Ducks' first half. Comes up short on this attempt. Oh, fortunate to keep it on the save there. Is that a behind the back? A little globetrotter save? Devin Carter, well, four Carter's. for four from distance. Yeah, he's starting to heat it up. So they have found the hot hand. You want to go back and milk it without forcing, but probe or investigate, and when you've got someone on your team that's feeling it, go to him. A whistle away from the basketball. You watch second half. If I know Dana Altman's halftime adjustments, they'll take him away in the second half. It's one of the things that Oregon has been really good at historically. Well, the officials again telling Coach Brady to take a seat. He's very animated. First meeting with Oregon, I wrote this down just for Ducks fans because I know they like things like this. He's never faced the University of Oregon. However, he's 3-0 against Oregon State. So there you have it. Happy Thanksgiving to our Oregon faithful. Boucher at the free throw line where he is still working to improve. Came into tonight's game at 44% from the stripe. Reigning Juco player of the year. A one out of two. So Oregon plus seven, and we'll hit the four minute mark here. A state with the drive, tipped up, Boucher collecting for Oregon. Benson leads them down the floor. Great look, Elgin Cook rinses it with the rights. Give Dylan Brooks the assist, the play of the night so far for Oregon. Well, and sharing the basketball in transition, JB. That's a hallmark of Dana Altman's teams. Eight of their 11 buckets have been assisted so far this evening. Now can they get a stop? Livingston with the touch. Let's see if he can get involved. One for six. Well, Boucher, I don't know if he blocked it, but he certainly altered it. But A-State on the second chance will have a look at a three-point play. Dante Thomas at the line when we come back. Mm, breakneck, fill the lane, send it in. 29, Devin Carter with 14 of A-State's 22. Again, if you're Arkansas State, you've got someone on your team like Carter who's torching the nets. You want to not force, but look to get him open, whether it's off draw and kick basketball or setting some staggered screens for him, some on-ball action. When someone's in that zone, go back to him. Small's back in for Oregon, stops at the block and hits Dorsey. He takes the on-ball from Brooks. Still time left on the shot clock as he gathers. Pick and roll with Brooks. There's the first hoop of the night for Dylan Brooks after starting 0 of 7. Oh, a good finish in the lane. The kiss off the glass, kind of jackknifed. Sean 
partner here. 12 left to shoot and a travel. A dozen turnovers for Arkansas State. Well, the good give up and Brooks able to keep his eye on the target, the rim, and put it down off the glass. Good body control. Coming off his third career double-double on Sunday. A slow start, but let's see if that gets him jump-started. A couple of free throws coming his way with 2.36 remaining. Reminder that Kate Scott is standing by with our State Farm Halftime Reports Holiday Edition. We we'll talk some men's and women's basketball coming up, including UW in the Bahamas. And last night, the Sun Devils go to overtime against Marquette in a matchup of uh, Duke guards on the sidelines. Well, Bobby Hurley's got that program moving in the right direction. A big win over North Carolina State. They'll improve as the year goes along. Teams that are well coached will have that success trajectory, not just this year, but moving down the line as they build that program. And Washington infused their program with excellent talent. They've got some young players that will only get better with time. They could be a sleeper team in the Pac-12. Watch out for the Huskies. Yeah, pick down at the bottom along with Washington State. I've seen both those teams. I'm not sure that 11th and 12th are good predictions for those squads. Oregon continuing to struggle at the free throw line as they fight for the defensive boards. Brooks from his belly pokes it ahead to Dorsey. Elgin Cook crossing over to the baseline. Offensive foul as he got a bit loose with that lead arm. Yeah, good defense here by Arkansas State. Just moving the feet. A little contact there, but when he extends the forearm, tries to do the Red Grange or the Heisman, then gives the official no, no choice but to call an offensive foul. This is still the home of the Heisman for a couple more weeks, you know. Good point. First foul on Elgin Cook, so that's the good news, and only six on the Oregon Ducks. Foul trouble has not been a factor in this contest. All tough pull up there for Dante Thomas. Missed everything. Boucher ahead to... The freshman Tyler Dorsey, who gets all the way with the left. But he's pushing the ball, gets good acceleration, speed in the open court. That's called a speed dribble coast to coast for the layup. Now, Arkansas State defensively, where are they? You've got to see the ball is being pushed. It's coming into your house, the lane, the tin, the cup, whatever you want to call it. Someone has to help stop the ball. But good push by Tyler Dorsey. He's as impressive as any freshman we've seen to this point. It's early in terms of this season. But Alonzo Trier, another outstanding guard at Arizona, uh, playing for Sean Miller. But I'd put Tyler Dorsey, because of the poise, uh, his bearing on the court is, is wise beyond his years. Pretty low impact first half, right? But he's impacted the game in so many ways. Five points, five rebounds, a couple assists. Yeah, the facilitator uh, on the floor, that, that approach... Uh, is going to help this Duck team. P.J. Hardwick, who's been battling an ankle injury, comes in with 137 remaining. Dante Thomas leads this team by a wide margin in both free throws made and attempted. He gets there late in the half. Well, the story with Arkansas State is Livingston, one for seven. You know, he's had 15 double-doubles last year, I think, against Marshall. He had a 20-20, 20, 20, 20 points and 20 rebounds, but he's been a phantom here in the Northwest, kind of lost on the Oregon Trail, Lewis and Clark style, to this point. Now, hopefully, he'll resurface in the second half, recalibrate, and uh, bring what he's capable of. I think that's what Dane Altman and his staff do so well, is they force you to beat them with something that you're not giving other teams. They took away Alec Peters for Valpo the other night. Tonight, clearly their game plan don't let Anthony Livingston beat us. Well, Dana Altman has been successful at every stop. Kansas State, Creighton, now Oregon. Puts together good coaching staffs, understands the system or style of play that he wants to employ, and then he recruits players that fit. Again, the marriage of system, style of play, and personnel. Uh, it's such a good fit here at Oregon. A strangely off night at the free throw line to this point, but perhaps Tyler Dorsey helps Oregon turn it around. A little more than a minute to go in the opening half. Their lead matches the largest in double figures. That's got to be an offensive foul on P.J. Hardwick, just like it was on Elgin Cook a minute ago. 
You have no need uh, to wrestle or fight out front, get rid of the ball, initiate offense. Uh, but instead, he puts his hand, his head down there, uh, you know, scampering some like a hamster instead of just initiating the offense. Another example, too, of Dorsey being a willing defender as a new arrival here in Eugene. Hiding behind that Brooks screen. He is pure. Better than 50% from behind the arc. Well, and never in a rush. There's that old phrase, be quick but don't hurry. Uh, he maneuvers, plays the game at a pace that allows him to see the game with clarity and make good choices. Dante Thomas slashing but traveled. Another giveaway. 14 first-half turnovers for the Red Wolves. So a 12-second differential, shot clock and game clock, and I'm sure that Dana Altman would not give this first half anything better than a C if he were grading it for his team, but they have a chance to have a comfortable margin after 20 minutes. It's a combination. Good defense by Oregon and then Arkansas State not taking care of the basketball. And they're correctable errors in terms of cleaning up these turnovers. They're unnecessary, unforced turnovers. Timer turned off. Let's see if the Red Wolves want the last. You want something positive to happen here on the last possession and hope that momentum carries over to the second half. Dorsey, the on-ball defender against Dante Thomas. Gardner spinning away. On the weak side glass, they missed it. Still time to get the shot off, but it's blocked. And it's Oregon 38, Arkansas State 25 at the break. Well, Dana Altman has to be pleased. Freshman Tyler Dorsey. Well, the poise, the composure of Dorsey, a facilitator, calm, cool, and collected on the floor. Three of three, including two of two from long range. Uh, the five boards, the two assists, and zero turnovers. So that's airtight efficiency for a freshman. And just four first-half turnovers for the Ducks as a team. He and Benson doing a nice job to protect the basketball. And again, that bought them time to recover from a shooting slump to begin the game. Here's the player you mentioned, Anthony Livingston, averaging a double-double but bottled up by the Ducks. Yeah, he'll have to step up and find a way to be more productive and help his team's cause here in the second half if this ball game is going to be competitive. Just one field goal in the opening 20 minutes for Livingston. He and the Red Wolves have the opening possession of the second half. Livingston came in averaging nearly 16 a game, nearly 11 rebounds a game. He does have six boards, but just not getting it done offensively. Christian Davis on the drive, turned away by Boucher. Here comes Brooks. Well, nothing going inside when you've got Boucher at the rim. Dylan Brooks, offensive. That'll be his first personal. It's been a rough offensive night for Dylan. Well, if you're Arkansas State, you need to chip away. You know, get a put back, get yourself to the foul line. You know, create some offense off your defense. Uh, there's no 13-point play, but you can gradually, incrementally crawl back into this game by being opportunistic. I always like to go inside early in the second half to establish the tone. You're right. They only shot three free throws as a team in that first 20-minute session. There they go inside. They didn't get the whistle, but they did get the two. Well, something going to the basket, you know, some aggressiveness where you might get the call from the official or you're shooting a high percentage shot and you're in close enough. If you miss, maybe you can clean up the garbage and get a put back. Uh, freshman Dorsey missing for the first time from the three point line. See if they go back to the cup. Devin Carter back to back hoops in the key. Now, I like Carter. He has a nose for scoring, uh, a sense of how to score in a variety of ways. We've seen him beat people off the bounce in transition and from long range. Wow. Just target practice from the three-point line for the Ducks. I got that in my toolbox, Coach. That's what he's telling Dana Altman. 33% from behind the arc for Chris Boucher. That's what I do, Coach. Weak side rebound, Livingston. Dead on the dribble, so he sends it back out. He didn't even want to put that ball back up when he's got Boucher behind him with that length. Boucher blocking three shots per night, altered that one, and got the board. Well, good point. Not only is he block shots, but he alters so many. Just Benson. Just with his presence. With the finger roll and free throws next for Casey Benson. I like Carter in transition here, probing the open court. A nice change of direction. So here's the three for Boucher. And then Boucher says, 
This is part of my toolbox. Money. Bottoms. Thank you. Benson, a 70% free throw shooter at the stripe, getting so many minutes again this season for Altman because of the way he takes care of the basketball. Playing 27 minutes per night and his assist to turnover ratio, 10 to 1 when this contest began. How's that for your point guard? Well, so important that you have contributions from people off your bench that you can trust, that are solid, that will transport, distribute the ball. You don't need five scores on the court at all times. And nope. Casey can score. He was the Arizona State Player of the Year, scored nearly 2,100 points in high school. But I think he realizes he's not the most talented scorer on this roster. You no, know, find a role that's going to help you add value to a team. And uh, roles are clearly identified here at Oregon. Players embrace those roles, and that's why they have such a, such a successful basketball program. Montreal product Chris Boucher back to the free throw line. The Ducks are just 50% for the Knights. What an intriguing prospect with his size, his hand-eye coordination. He's got a nice release on his free throw. We saw him knock down a three-pointer from distance. I asked our colleague Kevin O'Neill about Boucher the other night, and he likened him to a young Chris Bosch when he got his hands on Bosch as a draft prospect in Toronto and how frail he was relative to the pros at the time. That's an excellent comparison. Seems to have a coachable approach in terms of his demeanor. Boy, Aaron. that kind of night for Arkansas State and Livingston in particular. There's John B Brady's frustration. Been successful at every level. Have great respect for John Brady as a coach. Pick up the thought on Boucher as he rotates it to the wing. He's listed as a senior, but Oregon is optimistic that on an appeal, they're going to get him an extra year of eligibility. And if that's the case, he's going to have another season in the weight room, the facilities here in Eugene to really develop what right now is only at 190 pounds. Well, we see him on the weak side getting the offensive rebound, and it's tough to rebound when it's an air ball or it comes off the glass in such an awkward way as that, and yet still able to secure the ball. Now a year from now, he maybe gathers that and goes right back up and flushes it for an old-fashioned N1, and that's what we'll see as his game develops, just the natural maturity of development. Waters and Downs returning for the Red Wolves. You can see the free throw stroke settling in almost before our eyes. And he doesn't rush. Uh, that's what I like to see. You know, take a deep breath while you're up there. Uh, don't rush your routine or rush your release. So often players will do that. And it hurts their efficiency. They've got Elgin Cook on Devin Carter on this trip. A downs goes to work. Over the top of Boucher. Well done. A nice little spin move. Able to find daylight among the trees. 16-point lead and the basketball for Benson and the Ducks. A oh, nice post feed, a good cut, give and go. Flush it home, big fella. Boucher from Brooks. Great basketball there, two-man basketball. Like good jazz working together, hitting on all the right notes. I like that from Brooks, too. On Sunday, it was his night, went for a career high. Maybe not feeling it quite as much, so looking for Boucher. He gets it on the break. He can still make those. Boy, we're seeing all the skills on display. And this team, like a well-oiled machine, looking for one another and enjoying the thrill of the pass. Boucher got a piece of the defensive end, and he secures. Dorsey cranks it up in transition, weaving through. Look at the ball rotation all the way around. Tyler Dorsey. Everything but the bucket on the trip. Oh, but he sneaks in for a steal. Spins off contact. And a tie-up will go to the arrow. And it favors Oregon. All right, so here's that two-man game again for you, Lev. Well, the excellent post feed, the cut, and the finish. Timeout. Uh, Dylan Brooks tonight, just 2 of 11 shooting, but he has 5 of those 13 assists. 
Well, that's always a good sign when you have field goals coming off of assists because you're playing hot potato, you're tougher to defend, and when that ball is transported through the air as opposed to the bounce, you're more difficult to defend. Now, with that said, the bounce and the dribble, critical. That's part of the arsenal of good offense, but purposeful bounce, not wasted or massaging the ball. Baseline under, Cook gets a touch, and he'll get a couple of free throws, a chance to expand a 20-point lead. With just sharp execution, it's an alert and aggressive Oregon Duck team that we're seeing tonight. Cook, another one of those transfers that's paid off for Dana Altman in his second season, a JUCO transfer from Northwest Florida State by way of Milwaukee originally. So impressed. We hit on it earlier in the broadcast, but his poise and demeanor. I think teams are a reflection of a coach's persona and personality, and he's someone that keeps his cool. There's a quiet intensity. Uh, he's a fierce competitor. He coaches very well during adversity, going back a couple years, a slow start in Pac-10 conference play, yet they end up in the Sweet 16. That's good coaching when you're able to help navigate the adversity of a season. Boucher has done it again. Turns away Charles Waters. Well, as impressive a prospect as we've seen to this point in the season, and we've been coast to coast covering basketball and the influence on the game at both ends of the floor uh, at the rim, and then also his ability to step away. So unusual for a player of his size. Uh, to that point, so you've been around the league. You've seen some of the teams so far. This front court with Boucher and Elgin Cook looks a lot different, presents different challenges than an Arizona or a Cal or a UCLA. Oh, exactly. We talked about the Golden State Warriors, you know, a Draymond Green that's a point center or a point forward, depending on the evening. You know, you can go small, create matchup problems, invert your guard, step your bigs away, and that creativity, uh, the ability to get creative with your offense is a result of having personnel. In fact, that man, their small forward, their three, Dylan Brooks is probably their best back-to-the-back, a back-to-the-basket offensive player. Well, and a coach that has an open mind and is flexible in terms of year-to-year -year tweaking or adjusting his system to fit his personnel, again, that's good coaching. A sweet pocket pass inside, back to the perimeter. Charles Waters, six, six blocks for Chris Boucher. You know, I, you know, I love the length, the ability to extend without fouling. Because uh, so often when you have a shot blocker, they get into foul trouble. But he's finding that discipline within his defense to not foul. Again, he's not going to displace many players on the block, and so I think that keeps him out of foul trouble because offensive players don't exactly bounce off of Boucher. No, you fight your fight. You know, go with what you have. Sugar Ray Leonard fought one fight. Ali, Foreman, Frazier, different fights, right? He understands it's his length, his anticipation, his intelligence that's going to be what he needs to bring to the table. A dangerous point in this game for Arkansas State. Oregon can run away and hide if they're not careful. A six minute into it, and it's already a 21-point advantage. I like the fact Boucher's temperament is so even keel. He's not in the peaks or valleys emotionally. Uh, we've seen him make some big time plays, and yet he's not hyping himself up. Uh, he's on to the next play. Uh, he's in the moment. He's in the present and not celebrating the last play. Uh, that shows maturity. Kelvin Downs, dead on the dribble, looking for help. Gets it from P.J. Hardwick. A scramble for it. Downs has it. Boucher takes it away. Look at the skills. Comfortable handling the ball. Good find in the deep corner. Benjamin gets a second crack at it. Lost the handle. Dorsey inside. Fouled on the way up. I like the fact Benjamin followed his own shot. When you shoot the ball, you should have the information on whether it's short, where the ball's going to come off, and take that information and go get yourself a second shot to help your team. And that was a perfect example with Benjamin. Now he's got his teammate at the free throw line shooting two. McDonald's All-American gets a soft bounce off the heel. 
Here's Kendall Small, one of his classmates. A one out of two for Dorsey at the line. And that's the only chink in his armor this evening in terms of his performance. He's been near perfect other than the free throw shooting. 58% from the stripe as a team for the Ducks. Otherwise, this one might already be out of reach. Well, that's something they're going to need to improve because in close games, it's how you sustain a lead. It's how you come back against an opponent, chipping away with free throws. Connor Kern feeds Frederick Dure. Benjamin behind the back to keep it for the Ducks. He's got numbers. A la Dorsey. Not quite on the same page there. Well, Dana Altman not happy with that fast break opportunity. Kern on the counter from the corner. Well, a five-point swing there. Two that the Ducks should have had with numbers in transition than the three ball by Arkansas State. Small running the one. A five around here offensively with Benjamin. That's really the only potential weakness I see with the Ducks is the free throw shooting and at times struggling from the three-point line. But they're able to offset that lack of shooting with their defense, with open court opportunities, being opportunistic, and the fact they can dictate tempo at both ends of the floor with that speed. Well, is that something that Dylan Ennis can help with, the three-point line? You got a close look at him during your coaching days on the East Coast. What can Oregon fans expect from the Nova transfer? You know, I think he'll have improved because of the ability of working on his game between his stints at Villanova and now Oregon. But it'll be more perimeter power, more perimeter depth for the Ducks, which will allow them to sustain the tempo that they prefer to play at. That's really the key to basketball is imposing your preferred tempo on opponents, whether it's a slow tempo or a fast tempo, uh, varying ways to make that happen, full court pressure, uh, zone defensive teams pounding the ball inside if you're strong. And again, that gets back to adjusting to your personnel. But I think Ennis will help as well Bell. Uh, Sorkin returns and Boucher leaving the floor. Got a really nice handshake and a pat on the back from Dana Altman. I'm curious to see how Jordan Bell, the school's single season shot blocking record, how do he and Boucher share these shot blocking opportunities when he returns? Because they are going to be two dynamic defensive presences. Well, the tall trees and appropriate, as you know, prior to being the Ducks, they were the Oregon Furs uh, with the first NCAA championship back in the day. Uh, so I think they'll find a way, and again, that's where Dana Altman is brilliant at blending different talent, blending newcomers and transfers. Uh, that says a lot about his ability to coach. Yeah, they have not lost many after Valentine's Day since he took over in Eugene. They figure it out, and they excel down the stretch in league play and into the postseason. You know, we might be looking at the Pac-12 champion here. I've heard a few people Ducks. say that. A few of our panel of analysts, and now you're the latest to say it, if they could redo the preseason poll, might go with Oregon as their favorite. Yeah, and it's natural that Arizona at this stage is the slight favorite because they return experience, championship experience. But the Ducks have been knocking on the door for years now, and it won't be surprising if they bust it down and break through in 2016. They do not host the Arizonas in the league schedule, the unbalanced Pac-12 schedule, and they will not travel to Washington for the first time in forever. The Oregon and Oregon State programs will not. Well, and so often a championship comes down to the imbalance in the schedule. Yep. Who catches a break? And sometimes it's an injury as well. Uh, you know, one critical stage of a season where an unexpected contributor steps up. Those are so often what ends up determining a league championship. Sorkin for three. Look at the freshman, Dorsey, a put back for two. Originally committed to Arizona and then opened up his recruiting and ultimately chose the Oregon Ducks. Hard to argue. Appears to be a wonderful fit, JB. He's got a team high 15 points. They're trying to feed him again on the move. Small trailing the play. That guy was wearing a, uh, a white sweatshirt. I think he thought it was an Oregon Ducks uniform. He was open, but it's a turnover. We covered, we covered a lot of stuff. Once again, a distributed offensive attack. Well, 
a team like Oregon is difficult to prepare for if you're an opponent because of that balance. You can't key on one player. Case in point, last night, Oregon State, you know, Gary Payton the second with 23 shot attempts. As a team, the Beavers didn't have the balance necessary to win against a strong Valparaiso team. So they'll learn from that experience. They're going to need other players to step up. But here at Oregon, in Eugene, the Ducks have that balance that's necessary to win championships. All right, so say I put Oregon on your schedule for next week, and I realize we've only given you about a half an hour to a basketball to work off of. Who would be at the top of your Oregon scouting report? Where would you try and stop them? Well, right now, the head of the snake, the head of the dog, appears to be Tyler Dorsey. You know, disrupt his rhythm or flow, and you've got a better chance to unnerve the Ducks. But easier said than done because Tyler Dorsey is a cool customer, and he's very smooth. There's an ease with his game and a clarity in his judgments and decision-making that kind of defies his age. Uh, He does not play like a freshman. There's a challenge, and the bucket goes for Arkansas State off the baseline under Boucher. Displeased with the foul. That's the first time I've seen him get a little bit fiery. Charles Waters here, rising to the rim. Well, that just comes down to vision and stance defensively for the Ducks. And you see the breakdown in terms of communication and uh, them sniping or, you know, snipping at each other. And that's okay. You know, you want them to care enough and be engaged enough that uh, it matters when a team scores on you, even when you have a 20-plus point lead. I like the point you make about Dorsey because you get the sense that as Benson turns the corner, Casey Benson with his second field goal. Yeah, poor help side defense there. Again, got to see the basketball. A quick answer from Devin Carter. He's had a very strong night. He hits 20 points to lead all scores. Well, Livingston, if he comes, you know, tonight and produces, uh, this is a different game as we see Boucher with all types of skills, the scoop pass. Yeah, Livingston hasn't even taken a shot in the second half. He's hardly been seen from. Yeah, and he's been the anchor uh, for Arkansas State in terms of both ends of the floor, a double-double man, as we mentioned, 15 double-doubles last year and a 20-20 against Marshall, 20 points and 20 boards, not the vision. But uh, he's an impressive prospect. But tonight was a phantom, just didn't show up. But it might have been Boucher with the length. It might have been the quickness of the Ducks. They're collapsing defense in the post, as you mentioned, not letting um, Livingston get touches at point blank range and it might have been one of those nights which happens he's thinking about Thanksgiving or he's a little distracted or he just didn't play well we all have bad days in broadcasting coaching and playing and you just got to flush it learn from it move forward Steve Lavin, J.B. Long, glad you're with us for Holiday Hoops Aaron Owens our producer tonight Dan Becker is our director happy holidays everyone halfway home in our second session Oregon with a 20 point lead Trevor Manuel getting some minutes here. A defensive front for Oregon, trying to track down that long rebound. Second chance for Sean Gardner, and this time Benson pulls it. Ahead, Boucher running the floor. One big dribble, stops in the lane. Elgin Cook puts it down. Elgin Cook is going to challenge, slash, and attack some more. Well, the 6 6, six 7 long wiry you know athletic prospect Uh, that's what Oregon looks for when they recruit and you can see how difficult it is to guard a team like Oregon because you have to guard them with your four man and sometimes even your five based on the lineup Oregon plays Yeah, a lot of matchup problems I go back to the Golden State Warriors again with their approach or what we've seen over the years in international basketball and uh, Oregon has a little international flavor in their approach to basketball It seems that to beat a team like Oregon, you're going to have to make them pay at the other end with size and strength, right? For sure. Whether it's a Caleb Tarzuski or a Tony Parker or an Ivan Rabb or Josh Scott, Jakob Pertl, another name in our league who might be able to to put some hurt on you defensively for going small. Yeah, and get to Boucher, you know, if you can get him in foul trouble. Easier said than done because he has surprising discipline defensively we always think about shot selection and discipline but defense takes discipline as well to move your feet uh, focus on position know the scouting report you know stay down on shot fakes and uh, make good judgments in terms of discipline at the defensive end of the floor and and that's what impresses me about Boucher he's not skying up for shot fakes he's not out of position he's not lunging for the ball 
I'm just kind of chuckling to myself, thinking about the future matchup between him and someone like Caleb Tarzuski or a Reed Travis who's built like a Mack truck at Stanford. I mean, that's the diversity and the fun that the Pac-12 offers come the new year. It's true. You get the Sherman tank against someone that can run like a deer that's lean and long, the willow, the willow weed or the, the bamboo, the chopstick build. But I think Boucher has the ideal basketball body because he'll gradually put weight on uh, through the strength and conditioning program and through his diet. Uh, but Coach Wooden wanted players that had Boucher's build. You look at Alcindor and Walton and uh, Wicks and Rowe and Patterson and Marcus Johnson, you know, they all came in to UCLA as long, lean, athletic types. And he liked that length. He thought length was more important than strength. And by that you mean wingspan. And that's kind of the NBA uh, nouveau thing is uh, it's nice if you're 6'10", but we'd rather you be 7'4 with your wingspan. Yeah, and he felt strength was the least important. He wanted skill, he wanted quickness, and he wanted length. Uh, the height and the strength to him were not as important. Now, if you could get it all together, that's wonderful. Uh, and occasionally he did. But uh, more often than not, that's why they didn't lose very many games. But he had a philosophy and approach in terms of the type of player and the type of build, the morph, the body uh, that he would look for. You don't take shots or block them with your head, do you? <laughs> you no. Know, with your fingertips. And that's, that's right. That's all that matters. And Boucher certainly has that as much as anyone in this league. He also felt that late in the game when you had that length, you could play volleyball when other people were tired and they weren't getting off the floor that's as quickly for the second jump, that they'd be at the rim both offensively and defensively to use the length, the limbs, uh, like the limbs on a tree, the branches. Looking to set up the lob there to Benjamin. How about this drive from Manuel? His first field goal in emphatic fashion. He did throw that dunk down, Ooh. JB. Little fastball. Now he and Boucher alter that shot. They leave the weak side open, and Arkansas State gets a new possession. All right, right back to it. Trevor Manuel here. Well, Tom Seaver, Vida Blue, look at the velocity on that fastball. One more time. Ugh. Three high schools, Lav. State champ at, at Sexton in Michigan, a year at Oak Hill, and finished at Everett High School. Same that his father went to. Same that Irvin Magic Johnson went to. Mm, good research. A pin on the glass there. It's another block shot for Boucher. I believe that's seven and counting for the first year duck. Benjamin, ball fake, jumper. That was pure. You know, this team appears to be one that would be a joy to coach because they seem tied together. Uh, they work in concert. They genuinely appear to like one another. Banker, banks open. Papa shot from Frederick Duray, senior from Montreal. Elgin Cook coming downhill. And they run that dribble weave, and they get those guys coming down with a full head of steam. I like Cook there using the shoulder uh, like a running back and uh, putting that shoulder right into the sternum of the defender and knowing the way the officials this year with freedom of movement are calling the game gets himself to the free throw line as a result. A dozen second half fouls on Arkansas State, so it's double bonus for these final eight minutes for the Oregon Ducks. I said this the other night, but it bears repeating here. I thought Elgin Cook deserved to be the Pac-12's most improved player last year. It went to Josh Hawkinson, and you can't argue with that, the year-to-year -year improvement he made under Ernie Kent at Wazoo. But for Jayhawk, it was a matter of not playing at all to getting some minutes. For Elgin Cook, I think he really went to work on his game and found his niche in Dana's system. You know, it's interesting. Uh, it's a point that's well taken. You know, the, the players come and go, the names change, but the results have been the same up here under Dana Altman. There's a consistency, and some of that has to do with the player development. And uh, they're not in a major media market. And so I think sometimes a player in Los Angeles uh, or other parts of the country where there's more media attention, more of a spotlight or a glare, they get more hype or love. And uh, they're up here in Sherwood Forest. It's a little like Robin Hood and the boys. They don't get as much love. Time out us. Back after this, Ducks on their way to 5-0. and <laughs> There's Robin Hood. There's Robin Hood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
Giuseppe's Shea with a career high seven blocks. He's one shy of the record that Jordan Bell set for a single game last season in his debut with the Ducks. And they're trying to build the case to get him back for one more year. Did I hear correctly? Exactly. They're going to. Uh, he lost a year of eligibility due to when his NCAA clock started. But the Ducks are going to petition for a fourth year, and they feel good about their chances. Yeah, it'd be worthwhile to get outside counsel, hire the very best in the country uh, to fight that fight. If you're an Oregon Duck coach or fan, you'd like to see that done. He can't reject an appeal from a pure rejector, right? I mean, that's his territory. Who's the best attorney in the country to get that done? And I think also important just to his development. I don't know that he's ready physically for the next level, but you give him two years of training table and weight room in Eugene, he might be. He, he has that upside. Without a doubt, Benjamin again filling it up from deep range. Seven of ten from the floor. He's got 18 to lead the Ducks. There's Boucher with those long arms to gather another board. We get organized very quickly here. Four around one spacing. Then they'll get into their half-court sets. A little ball screen here by Boucher. Dorsey's got 15 points on only six shots. He's so efficient with his minutes. Manuel had it stripped. Off balance. What a kiss. A little pirouette. Well, yes, Dana Altman has won the transfer game for several years here in Eugene, but he also has an elite freshman class that if they form a nucleus going forward, they could be good for a really long time. Now, there I'm... aren't enough blocks to go around tonight, Lav. No, it's been impressive. Still can't get one. Boy, Livingston just a lid on the rim. You feel for him. Again, great use of the shoulder into the sternum of the defender, and that keeps the defender groundbound. They can't elevate if you hit them with that shoulder initially. Wow, we talk about the Nutcracker at this time of the year in terms of musicals, and how about the pirouette here, a little dance move. Barishnikov and the smooch off the glass. Thought you were going with the tights there. Robin Hood, <laughs> you know, we, we mentioned Robin Hood. There could be some tights there as well in terms of the Nutcracker, but uh, Dana Altman does look a bit like Errol Flynn in the original Robin Hood, especially when he has the stash rocking like he does now. <laughs> or did he shave the stash? At one point, he had the stash. We'll have to get a close-up of him to see if he's still rocking the stash. I'm sure our graphics team is frantically searching Google Image to get you a side-by-side -side before we're done here. And tonight, Errol Lab. Flynn was dashing, so that's a compliment. Uh, he was a handsome devil. Dana Altman, 57 years old, in his sixth season, Twice a Pac-12 coach of the year, including a season ago. Another block, this time Benjamin closing out. He's got Brooks running with him. And the follow, Boucher. Well, this is quite a sequence. You see Boucher leading the break, giving it up, and then off the Benjamin miss, he's there to clean up the garbage for the flush. Now, that tells you about the variety of skills that are in his toolbox. Devin Carter gets to 22 points on his night. He's got nearly half of the A-State points. Benjamin again, blocked with the second effort. Benjamin's tired. He's gassed. He may need a sub. Carter behind the back gets it to Thomas. A good little burst here from the Red Wolves. And I think Dane Altman's going to stop it. Well, this breakneck pace, you better be in great shape in terms of the cardiovascular. How about Boucher? Let's take it from behind the backboard. Should we laugh? How about this? Hello. Game. Well, JB, the good post feed, the give and go. He's rewarded with the flush. Takes his time here. Nice lift, good rotation or backspin on that shot. Defensively with the blocks at the rim. Staying down, good discipline to not pick up the foul. How about this sequence? Picks up the air ball, leads the break. Good vision, throws it ahead to Benjamin. Benjamin doesn't convert, but I'll take it in with the second shot. I had a, a Boucher bingo card in front of me, and as you went through that, I just stamped every quadrant. He, he has done it all tonight. Well, if you're an NBA scout, not to get ahead of ourselves here because he has a lot of senior year and potentially another season if granted by the NCAA. But uh, it's the fact that he does so many things on both ends of the floor that makes him such an intriguing prospect. And the way he runs, the grace with 
the way he bounces up and down this court. In support, Benjamin has 18 and 5. Not a bad Robin to his Batman. There's a foul on the floor. They'll count the bucket, and Anthony Livingston finally gets going, but it's going to be too little too late. Boy, I feel for Anthony Livingston. He knows this is a big game as an upperclassman uh, to come in here against a strong Oregon Ducks team and not perform to your capability. It's got to be frustrating. But again, it could be he didn't get a good night's rest. He might be fighting the flu. Uh, it could be just Boucher's length and having not faced someone like that. That's unique. It takes time to uh, to get your bearings, and he just hasn't found his rhythm tonight. Unless he really catches fire late, Oregon's going to be the first team to hold him shy of double figures this season. That's the first mistake we've seen Boucher make with an errant pass. And recovery manual got tangled. It'll be his foul. Now, at this stage, 444, the 22-point lead, you want to continue to build good habits in preparation for your next game, but also not have injuries. And... Uh, already shorthanded with Ennis and Bell being out. So it's a fine line. I won't be surprised if, you know, gradually, uh, you know, reserves are put in the game so that no one sprains an ankle or has some unnecessary injury going into Thanksgiving. Well, next up, Fresno State, 5 o'clock Pacific on the 30th. That's also on Pac-12 Network as we get a look at Dana Altman's upcoming schedule presented by Jared. Well, some good challenges and also some games that the Ducks can clearly win. Uh, they'll be capable of being undefeated stepping into Pac-12 conference play. Something they did two years ago. Then they had a tough stretch. Correct. They hit league play and Utah got them and they struggled, but then they found it late. They've been finding Boucher every trip down the floor, it feels. Well, good penetration there by the Ducks. Get the help defense to step up from the baseline and then drop that little dime under the branches for the dunk. A double-double is their only a statistical category in our minds, right? But it'd be nice to see Boucher get one more board so that he can cap a 17-point night in double-double fashion. He might get a triple-double if they leave him on the floor long enough to get three more blocks. Well, and he's earned double portions tomorrow at Thanksgiving uh -huh. in terms of the turkey, the mashed potatoes, lots of stuffing for Boucher. His goal is 200 pounds before they report for their next game, that Fresno State contest, right? Give him the whole pumpkin pie <laughs> and then plenty of whipped cream on top. Oh, we should be so lucky, Lev, to be 190 again, right? <laughs> yeah, that's my goal, drop 50. I want to go the other way, JP. <laughs> trying to get, trying to get down to that's 190. That's exactly what I'm saying. Too many nice restaurants in San Francisco. It's killing me. Max Heller, a senior from Del Mar by way of ASU and LMU, is into the contest. Yep, see how they look for one another. Benjamin's been distributing the ball in these recent possessions. We saw Boucher and, again, the drive and the kick. That's a great attribute or trait. Even late in the game when your better players, the ones that are getting more minutes, are looking to share the ball with the reserves. It means they're tied together. They care about one another. Well done by Dylan Brooks there to stay in front, moving the feet. Here's Benjamin to cap his Knights. Well, good basketball karma. He shares the sugar in the last two possessions. Now he's rewarded with a run out and flush. A 20-point evening for Dwayne Benjamin. That's a nice counter to his 0 for 5 shooting night against Valpo. He bounces right back. Gets the block there from the backside. Boy, he is a player that... Uh, adds value in multiple ways at both ends of the court. I think Boucher just got his eighth back up and in from Livingston. Good. Livingston's thirsty here late. Wants to get his stat numbers back up to the level of his averages. Non-scholarship guys about to get some minutes here for Dana Altman. Benjamin lets one more go. Oh, that's the sweet spot. He likes the deep corner. Feeling it. Shredding the nets. Hit that half quarter in the opener. That one from the corner for 23 points on his night. Nine of 16 shooting. Well, he gets good lift, too. Gets his butt out, which means that you're flexed or coiled. And then a good release. Number 21, Oregon in front as we hit the final media stoppage. Benjamin with 23 points. Initial nine blocks, a new Oregon single game record. And Jordan Bell, who sits down just a few seats away from him, 
who set that record last year, is surpassed. We'll see if he has an answer when he gets fit and on the floor. If they can get back to full strength, maintain this chemistry they've created here early in the season, uh, they are a team that looks to be a Pac-12 champion. Roman Sorkin missing from three. Heller with the foul in transition. They've also got Charlie Nobel, a junior by way of modern day. A three-time state champion on the floor. And there's Bell. Well, and there'll be a certain period of transition when new players come back in midstream uh, with the season ongoing, similar to musicians working into the band and still hitting on all the right notes or making that good jazz. Uh, but that's what coaches are paid to do. And uh, there seems to be a nucleus and a, a collective mindset uh, that they want to play together. You don't see any selfish play out there. And Dylan Ennis was the last at the end of the bench there that you saw. And those players know that if they come back to a winning team that's clicking on all cylinders, they're going to have to fit in seamlessly and do the things that the guys ahead of them have done so far. Absolutely. And the goals have to be winning and championships as we see Benjamin again with the reverse layup there, nifty off the glass. And it was Troy Norris with the steal to set it up. There is Dylan Ennis out with a foot. I spoke with him over the weekend. He is itching to get back. He's so excited about what this team has accomplished so far. Well, and he'll help defensively. He has the potential to be a glove at the defensive end of the floor. And then offensively, again, perimeter depth, some more firepower at Dana Altman's dis disposal. Uh, defensively, they're holding the Red Wolves to 30% shooting from the floor tonight as we hit the final 90 seconds. Oregon's going to go to 5-0 and on the season. Next up, a Fresno State team on the 30th. And Troy Norris kicks to Sorkin, who puts it down. Roman Sorkin after it again. And off the lid of Josh Pierre. His father, Butch, a longtime coach, an assistant in Stillwater at Oklahoma State. And chasing after that. Loose ball inbounds. Final 60 seconds from Matthew Knights. Red Wolves take it away. That's the 10th turnover by Oregon tonight. They've taken good care of the basketball. And free throws coming for P.J. Hardwick with 54 seconds remaining. Well, 1939 was the last time the Oregon Ducks won a national championship in basketball. And at that time, they were the Furs. But it was the first NCAA championship in college basketball. And it was the last for the Ducks. But this is a year where they're going to have opportunities come March to do something special as Coach Altman continues to raise the bar. There were some good runs under Dick Harder and Ernie Kent with two Elite Eights. But this is a team primed or poised to make a deep run come March. And some players on the roster who have experience in the postseason. Three straight NCAAs for the Oregon Ducks. First time in UO history they've gone to three straight dances. And they've won at least a game in each of those years, too. So it's not like they've just made appearances. They've done some damage once they got there. Well, the old Mac court, no longer their home court. But this state-of-the-art facility uh, has elevated and helped their recruiting. Here's how Dana Altman has built it to the point where it is currently from the CBI to the NIT to three straight NCAAs. Well, that progression is an indication of a healthy and vital basketball program, and he's done it at multiple stops. So like an architect, uh, someone that builds houses that has a great reputation, when you've done it at multiple stops, it speaks to your ability to build. Some names here, huh? Beheim, Coach K, William Self, Izzo, and then Dana Altman, the active head coaches who have put together 18 straight winning seasons or more. And he does it in an unassuming way. I think that's one of the reasons Duck fans respect Coach Altman. Uh, not a lot of fanfare, very humble, hardworking, uh, no-nonsense approach. Shot clock turned off so the Ducks can dribble it out. 5-0 on the young season with wins over the likes of Baylor and Valpo. 21 next to their name in the national rankings. It's a 91-68 victory over the Red Wolves of Arkansas State.
And there are so many aspects that we can speak to that were impressive. Uh, Tyler Dorsey's poise, Boucher at the rim and showing the diversity of his skill set and game. And, of course, Benjamin, uh, who went to work and uh, put up big numbers. So it's really about the team when you see what's so impressive. Just the Oregon Ducks approach. Uh, they methodically dismantle uh, just a buzzsaw cutting through Arkansas State tonight. Uh, Benjamin with 25 points to lead four Ducks in double scores. Dorsey, Cook, and Boucher there as well. And how about Boucher setting a new single-game Oregon record with nine blocks? For Steve Labatt, I'm J.B. Long, 91-68 the final. We'll send it to Kate Scott to continue our night of Pac-12 hoops. Happy Thanksgiving.